Hello and welcome. Today I wanted to analyze with you three recent debates between Piers Morgan and some popular figures in the community around Palestine. So let us dive in. Mohammed Hijab, a controversial pro-Palestine influencer with nearly a million YouTube subscribers of his own. Uh, I hadn't actually watched your videos. I have now. I tells it all. He doesn't watch his Mohammed Hijab's video. It's, it's like Piers Morgan doesn't even care about the points Mohammed Hijab are gonna, is going to make. If you, if you want to say fair grounds, mm. you introduced me as a Palestinian controversial... I actually post. corrected myself. So why don't you introduce me as the Oxford graduate? So here we have Mohammed Hijab on the defensive. So he tries to correct Pierre Piers Morgan. Do you want to be introduced as that? Yes. Okay. Or an Oxford graduate. <laughs> okay. That's that's a, you very rarely gonna get Muslims introduced with uh, some more relevant credentials. Okay. When your purpose is and to entertain, you're always gonna present your guests as uh, with the edge. You know, the, all the gritty stuff. In our religion, we do not believe. Okay, as a Muslim, I am a Muslim, and I do not believe in the killing of any man, woman, or children, um, non-combatants. That is not despite the religious teachings, that is because of the religious teachings. I think he anticipates what Piers Morgan is going to ask him, which is to condemn Hamas. Because lots of people believe that, yeah, Islam is this terrible religion that encourages its followers to kill civilians left, right, and center. But if you have followed the structure of uh, Piers Morgan's interviews, there's always a same question structure. How did you feel? Second question, do you condemn Hamas? Third question, what is a proportionate response? All these interviews are like a game where, you know, if you, you have to answer rightly to the first question, if you want to be asked the second question and so on. And that's why I condemn the IDF. But also there is, they're, they're stopping them from electricity, water, which is a war crime. Very, very good argument. Well, I think it's an arguable point, but it's a war crime. Okay. What happened on October the 7th was a war crime. So again, double standards. IDF is allowed a presumption of innocence, but not Hamas, not the Palestinians. No, no, that, that's completely untrue. That is, that no, is no, true. What's your Mohammed, source? Are you seriously arguing that yes, babies yes. weren't killed? And no, I didn't say that. Well, what not, are you saying? I, I'm saying, give me a source. Pierce Morgan doesn't have access to sources because of the very uh, setup of how these debates work. He is given facts by a whole team whose job is to research the facts and the sources, and he's just fed bits of information without probably the time to verify them. So he talks according to a certain script. Yeah. You know full well, you've been fired from the Daily Mirror for fake images. Mm. So you know full well about the-, the I didn't accept they were fake. And here you see developing the agonistic style of Mohammed Hijab, which I was talking about in the video dedicated to him, where he really tries to confront Piers Morgan on his double standards, on his research work he hasn't done. I was editor of the Daily Mirror when we opposed the Iraq war, sure. on the grounds that I believed it was an illegal war. Okay, so he tries to bring on his position on the Iraq war, kind of show to Mohammed Hijab that he's one of the good guys. He tries to get things out of Mohammed Hijab for the sake of entertainment. Uh, when Mohammed Hijab tries to get Piers Morgan to acknowledge that there is inconsistencies in his own discourse. Academics require primary source evidence in mm. order to make it. The Daily Telegraph said. Evidence? The Daily Telegraph said they verified the picture. It's, 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 that's a second resource. You may say that's you, second resource. You, you, journalists are not an academic authority. You know mm. that full well. You've been fired because, from Daily Mirror for that mm. very purpose. Why? Basics, you know, ABC of journalism. I'm saying I want to see the evidence. So why why are you picking on the semantics of the veracity of one picture, it's not, it's not, which has been verified by British journalists? Why are you picking on that? British some journalists some, are some not example that somehow this wasn't as bad as it seems. British what we have seen here is Piers Morgan trying to return the argument of uh, semantics nitpicking to Mohammed Hijab while he's been doing the very same thing from the beginning. Do you condemn the killing of those children by the IDF? And here is, here is his mission in, in this interview. He came in here to try to get Piers Morgan to condemn the crimes committed by the IDF because Piers Morgan have been, ha, has been, you know, all about condemning Hamas, condemning Hamas. I'll tell you what I condemn. I yes or no? So, so now, look, Mohammed Hijab is playing the game of Piers Morgan as, as a journalist because this is usually the tactics they use. They're going to push their host into a corner uh, with a yes or no question. Okay. I think that what happened on October the 7th was one of the worst atrocities I have ever had to read about or watch on it happens videos. every day in Palestine. No, no. So the game of Piers Morgan is also always to redirect, refocus on Israeli civil losses. 
never the Palestinians. It could, you know, it's like as if Palestine is a side note. Well, you're going to say you deny everything. No, right? no, I'm not denying anything. You're trying to uh, put ma uh, words in Mohammed Hijab's uh, mouth. If he's questioning things, you deny it has happened. Well, well, you know, he is completely able to do that for the Israeli side. No, we don't know. We're waiting for the investigation. Oh. No, I accept that some civilians have been killed. I do mm. accept this. And I, and I already said You I don't could... believe any of the reports that women were raped? No, I didn't say that. I said that it's still to well, be do you think they were raped? No, I don't know. It's like the uh, Russell Brand thing. You said we don't know. We need to see the evidence. So I... Yeah, very good argument from Mohammed Jab again. The whole conversation is still, you know, a standstill. We are still talking about sources and evidence. We are eight minutes in. When it's Russell Brand, you There's don't know if There's no comparison rape between Russell Brand and what's happening It's the here. same thing. It's a rape allegation. Why are you, why are you stuttering? <laughs> It's it, he is Mohammed Hijab, same thing as Piers Morgan, and trying to pick on some apparent weaknesses not related to the situation at all. You're stuttering. What kind of argument is that? But you know, this is what journalists do. They, they they're gonna pick on any kind of weakness they perceive to as an argument against their opponent. Okay, but do you condemn that? Yes or no? I don't think so. Any... You refuse to condemn. No, you do refuse Why to condemn. Are you putting... Go Israel ahead. is entitled to, to kill defend. children. No, stop. And, and, and same thing, you know, Piers Morgan has been putting words in Mohammed Hijab's mouth. And then now, now he tries to reverse the, the, the argument. Can I, can I, I don't like any civilian death. Do you mind if I answer I question? don't endorse any civilian death. Well, no, no, do no. I you don't condemn it though. Hang on. You? Very, very good punk of Mohammed Hijab. So Piers Morgan is allowed for some reason, nuance, saying that he disagrees with uh, disapproves with civilians being killed, but he wouldn't condemn uh, what the IDF did. He supports Israel's right to defend, which are completely two disconnected issues. Okay, why can't you defend yourself, but still respecting international law? What is proportionate? Okay, so let me ask you a question now. If there was IRA, IRA in Belfast mm. and they were occupying council properties... And it's a very, very good argument, uh, bringing the situation kind of home, but he brings on the table a hypothetical case scenario. It never happens, so the like for like isn't... It's not, relevant. it's a hypothesis. It's, no, hypothetical. it's not, it's not. I don't do hypotheticals. And here we go. He shuts down the conversation, Piers, because it's hypothetical. It's you that's the, doing that. The, the only comparison that I would say that we saw from October the 7th and what Hamas did is with ISIS. Two different contexts. The difference between the Palestinian resistance is the following, okay? Any kind of thing which has Palestinian resistance attached to it mm. and ISIS, which is a, as a brand of tech fearism, okay? Oh no, this is, this is not good. If Mohammed Hijab tries to get onto these technical terms, um, it's not going to go anywhere because, first of all, the audience doesn't understand that. They're occupying, they're seizing, they're bombarding, they're indiscriminately killing, and they're blocking the supply lines, they're using white phosphorus, shooting the people. Because what differentiates it? Israel will say it has a right to defend itself. So will the terrorists. Right? That's what Osama bin Laden they, said. Very, very good arguments. Mass aren't defending themselves. Bin Laden wasn't okay. defending Define himself. defense. No, no, no. Why, why, why do, we, do you keep trying to... Define words. The main point is going to get lost. So you can kill right. civilians for that? You, you can target Hamas. But this is the same question he's been asking for more than 10 minutes. Why? This, you're talking about fallacies. This is called the Morton Bailey fallacy. Mm. And the, again, Mohammed Jeb goes into technical terms. Which is that you're trying to defend one controversial idea by yeah. using another. It's Martin no, no, no. He's going to he's going to reply by a question. I. How do you think we get You'll to a place You'll be surprised. Look, Ham even Hamas, some four or five years ago, they even agreed to the 1967 lines, the borders. I think Mohammed Hijab stayed very uh, um, faithful to his, you know, the boxing debating style. But the problem is, if we stay in the, in the martial arts uh, analogy, debating with Piers Morgan is, you know, you have Mohammed Hijab, the boxer, against a sumo wrestler. He cannot move out of line. It's a job at the end of the day for Piers Morgan. The job is very simple. He's got an audience to entertain. It's very likely, I believe, that you know, once uh, all the interviews are over, he just goes home, uh, has a nice dinner with a nice glass of wine, goes to sleep, and end of the story. You know, He's not going to think twice about it. So yeah, I think it was a good attempt, but uh, I, I felt the debate was kind of stalling. Mohammed Jeb was trying to be creative with uh, his analogies, his arguments, but again, Piers Morgan, because it is his job at the end of the day, he's not going to move an inch 
and give an inch to Muhammad Hijab. He is there to question Muhammad Hijab, to get things out of Muhammad Hijab. So let's move on to another, uh, the, se the, the next debate. First of all, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Oh, it was terrible, of course. My wife's family, they live in Gaza. He's got family in Gaza. So I was expecting to to be outright like condemnation, condemnation of uh, the IDF has done. Really, I try to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human shields. I can never take her out. Comparing to how Mohammed Hijab was on the defensive, and in here, Bassem Youssef feels complete, he seems completely comfortable, almost as if he doesn't care. This attitude of being really relaxed, uh, calm and almost playful, uh, it does something. I wonder how it's going to play out against another TV presenter. Yeah, I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people who ever walked this earth. He's, that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of bitches as possible and anyone Anyone who call for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. So God forbid, I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. So my question to Ben Shapiro is, how many more son of bitches do we need to kill so Ben Shapiro is happy? Mohammed Hijab is a boxer in debates, so I would say uh, Bassem Yusuf's strategy is more of Aikido. You're not fighting against someone, but you are using the opponent's strength against themselves. And this is what Bassem Yusuf just did. He goes along the way, he exaggerates, he extrapolates the argument to reveal its absurdity. Now, that is significant, substantively different to what you said he said, right? He's talking there but, but specifically I agree, I, but, but about I Hamas agree terrorists. With him. I, agree, I, I, I agree with him. Very different strategy to Mohammed Hijab. Instead of nitpicking on what was said, what was not said, Bassem Yusuf flattens himself out in front of Piers Morgan. I agree. I agree with everything you said. And this is a strategy to kind of appease, disarm the opposing side in order to come back more forcefully. The, the thing is, the question is, what is a proportionate response? Because yes. it has been different from one tier to another. So if you look to this graph, for example, this is the death of Israeli and Palestinians. A perfect example. So he redirects the conversation. I, I don't, I'm not on either no, side. No, 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 not you. Like when I yeah. say you guys, I say like the people on the other side of that. I know that you, you don't think like that. You're one of the good guys. Very, very, very clever. You know, even if Piers Morgan knows that Bassem Youssef is playing a game and he's being satirical, cynical, um, these words always have an impact on human mind. I agree with you. And you know what? I'm going to be even ahead of you because I see the question coming. Do you condemn Hamas for the atrocity? Yes, I condemn Hamas. Mm. I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hamas. Hamas is the source of all evil. So he's a TV presenter, obviously, Bassem Youssef. So he, he knows how to steer an interview because he's, he knows how the other person tries to steer the interview. But then let's have a look at what he's going to say. He's going to switch the topic of the conversation onto something very, very different. For a minute, imagine a world without Hamas. Right. What will this word look like? Mm. Let's give this word a name and let's name this word the West Bank. 37 Palestinian kids were killed. Mm. No music festival, no paragliding. No Hamas. When you are on a TV debate, and I got this from people who I know personally who are kind of popular figures and go on TV debates. People who have always told me if I ever go on a TV debate, never answer directly. Instead, you have to prepare what you want to say, even if it's not related at all to the question. And this is exactly what Bassem Youssef is doing. Uh, because if you want to only hear your opinion, I can just condemn Hamas and go home. Mm. I can do that. So if you, do you want to do that or do you have a much more nuanced conversation? Ooh, this, this, <laughs> he shows to Piers Morgan that he knows how things work. He's a TV presenter. Israel is the only military force in the world that warns civilians before bombing them. I mean, how fucking cute. If Russian troops started warning Ukrainians before bombing their houses, we're cool with Putin, right? So why people who see that cutting off electricity, uh, water and other resources to civilians in Ukraine is a war crime, but the same uh, done in Gaza uh, it might not be a war crime, double standards. And I think this is really, really clever to, uh, again, because it hits home. Uh, about human shield. So you remember 
My wife's family, they live in Gaza. So I asked them, you know, what, uh, Hassan here, uh, my, my, wife's, uh, my wife's cousin, he's a, he's, a, he's a loser, you know. Because when you give, give people uh, people's names, people's stories, even, you know, even if it's just anecdotal, it does something uh, to, to the audience. We're not talking about concepts such as, you know, civilians, combatants. We're talking about people who have names. What do you yeah, think would be an appropriate response by Israel to what happened? You know, he directs back to the question proportionate response. Did it solve the problem? Did it, did it work before? What will be different this time? Boom, again, instead of uh, directly answering, he bounces back with another question to Piers Morgan. Because you were honest about it. You said that spreading lies like WMDs make mm -hmm. people look at those people as less of humans and they would accept the death of a million Iraqi, whether by shanks or... No, I agree. Well, another agreement from Piers Morgan. This is crazy. You are, you, you are a good man. Is, is it all the compliments? Is it, is it all the good words that he is? This is amazing. And you know what is similar? is when you spread the lies of 40 decapitated babies. Now we are entering in heated territory. Who you has have said that? 40 decapitated? Who has said you that? Have, you have repeat. No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. A complete blatant lie. I choked up earlier reading this new revelation about 40 babies being killed. Oh my God. And some of them Don't. being beheaded. Obvious lie. But you know, when you are a TV presenter, you can get away with anything. And you can make the audience believe that what you are saying now, at this very moment, is the truth. No, Nobody haven't. said it? No. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe I am wrong. Incredible move from Bassem Youssef to, you know, if they lie, let them lie. Yeah, let's uh, switch to the next thing. They are human animals who live in open sewage and decapitate babies. And mm. because of that propaganda, Mr. Morgan, mm. that guy in Illinois, the 71 years old guy, he killed, stabbing the six years old Palestinian kid in Illinois 26 times. And he used to play with him. They used to be friends. But he went in, marching into their apartment, stabbing his mother and killing him, shouting, all Muslims could die. Uh, ask, ask how him. do we get from where we are now to peace? Well, first of all, you need to change the perception. Uh, Nikki Haley, the American presidential candidate, said we are in Israel in this because it's a fight between evil, uh, good and evil. These are simplistic terms uh, used for a people to appeal to people's uh, symbolic attachment to culture or religion to polarize people against each other and take sides for making this situation black and white at the origin again it is a european colonial problem it is not rooted in any religion or, or, or thing because first you know the british wanted to settle israel in uganda in africa yeah nowhere in the bible it was says that yeah jews should be uh, in uganda now has been extrapolated as a like a global battle a biblical ma uh, b battle in a way between jews and muslims oh is it listen this question of proportionality is one that no 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 answer my question i've been answering your question you answer mine it's actually not my job to answer your questions uh <laughs> i and yeah you cannot say anything against that he gets to direct the interview in whichever way he likes to, because even if it's not fair. He has answered a few of Basim's questions before, but now he just decides, no, I'm not going to answer any more. I am going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have fucked our courts, our Supreme Courts, what are you doing with the money being given to you to the United States. He needs a hell of a lot of confidence to do that. He is breaking the fourth wall because now he's not trying to convince Piers Morgan of anything. What he's talking to, who he's talking to is uh, the audience. He's being completely real and he's stating facts that many Israeli agrees and, and the government they've had for the past years have done a horrible job at taking care of their own citizens. He tries to make the best of the situation, not to steer the conversation in a way or another, like Mohammed Hijab was trying to get Piers Morgan to condemn Hama, um, uh, the IDF. But he's, Basim Youssef is very much aware that uh, the key stakeholder in this conversation is the audience and uh, the, uh, an audience which can be passionate about one side or the other, but forgets the nuances and forgets that at the, at the core, it is not this uh, sim symbolic biblical battle between 
uh, good and evil, uh, Jews and Muslims or whatever. It is a battle for land, for resources. It is a battle for votes. Uh, done by a handful of people in power who completely disregard the civilians who are dying in, on the ground, whether it is on the Palestinian side or the Israeli side. And I think this is why this interview is so, so, so powerful. Now, uh, let's switch to our uh, next and final contender, uh, our friend Karim uh, Loki. What was your reaction when you first heard about these attacks on October the 7th? Well, let's be clear reading the testimony of survivors of October 7th from Kibbutz Bi'eri, like Yasmin Porat, was extremely harrowing. But also, she then says that the Israeli military tanks fired on the room where the hostages were, killing 12 Israeli civilian captives. So with Loki, we are starting off where it ended with Bassem Youssef, which is the point of the Israeli government and the IDF do not even care about their own citizens. Right, let me, let me respond to you. You tweeted on October the 7th, the arrogance to believe you could keep 2 million trapped in an open air prison indefinitely. And now he's going to switch to the second question. Do you condemn Hamas? I see it coming. So just for the record, do you condemn what Hamas did that day? I condemn the genocidal conditions which have created this violence until so neutral observers oh, so, so just until sure, neutral okay, observers are able respond. to establish the facts of october 7th same line of uh, inquisition as someone in power you allow um israel to have a presumption of innocence the right to defend themselves but when it comes to the other side and if people want to wait before there is an investigation you, co you condone uh, crimes against uh, humanity. Very, very vicious. I can absolutely express my horror at the deaths of Palestinian innocent civilians. He mourns the, 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 the loss of life uh, uh, on the Palestinian side, but he refused to condemn the idea for what ha has happened. I absolutely mourn the loss of all human life in this conflict. I've given you an opportunity to simply say whether you condemn what Hamas did, which... Double standards. While, you know, Piers Morgan just refused to condemn what the IDF did and mourns the, the loss of life. So Loki, exactly the same. He's been questioned by Piers Morgan. Why do you refuse to condemn? About this very concept of you know, to refuse to condemn, uh, a little, uh, not many people know that Loki uh, was part of um, the book of uh, the same the same name, I, I Refuse to Condemn, directed by Asim Qureshi, explaining why is it always when there is a, a terror attack, Muslims are always asked, do you condemn the terror attack? Do you condemn Al-Qaeda? Do you condemn ISIS? Even if they have nothing to do with, with that, because you're Muslim, people in their subconscious think that, oh, you share the same, you're the same family as ISIS, you're the same family as Al-Qaeda. And again, that's the weakness of the human brain, you know, uh, making these conflations that puts an unfair burden on minorities who are uh, subconsciously associated with all the violence and evil in the world. If your fellow Muslims condemn, uh, they agree that they are associated with ISIS, with Al-Qaeda. They agree that they have a stake in that game. They agree that uh, they all belong to a same family and therefore it legitimizes your dehumanization of Muslims as a whole. It's about, you know, blaming this Muslim collective. In the book point, why is it important as a minority to refuse to systematically condemn things we are not related to? It is because uh, it's a form of resistance and condemning, uh, 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 refusing to condemn acts of violence doesn't condone them. We don't close our eyes on the acts of violence. We just refuse to blame collectively, a collective of people, a general, a huge simplification, generalization. We refuse to, um, we refuse to fall in this generalization. We refuse to fall in this simplification. We refuse to associate ourselves with people who we are not related to, we don't have any stake in, who do not represent anything but themselves. We refuse this association between terrorism, between violence and the global Muslim population. Because what you're trying to put me in is 
once I condemn just asking this, you a question uh, this once I condemn these people is that you can then answer me and tell me that Israel has the unequivocal right to defend itself which what mean which what that means is that they eradicate a people so then ask another question did Bassam Youssef did right to condemn Hamas or to Mohammed hijab to condemn Hamas well this is a debate for activist circles so Loki is holding this very nuanced position uh, which has all this context behind it and he refuses to fall into this simplification of yeah i'm just going to condemn hamas and be done with it um, he wants people to know what's the reality what's under the underneath the surface do you know what the anc struggle against apartheid entailed are you aware that the anc are believed to have very unfortunately, horrifically and terribly taken the live, lives of children and civilians in their struggle against apartheid. So Piers, you seem absolutely content to not only compare yourself to Nelson Mandela, who served 27 years in jail for what they described as terrorism at the time, but yet you cannot see what the vast majority of human rights organizations in the world see when they look at the Palestinians. You remember Mohammed Hijab was drawing this hypothetical parallel with um, uh, the IRA. So Loki here, he brings onto the table a historical fact. Yeah, you know, the, the reality was not black and white. Uh, the struggle for liberation was not all peace and love. There was part of violence because the apartheid was a violent system of oppression. It, it is important to understand in a colonial context that some people uh, who do not have access to legal recourse, who do not have power by definition, this is the last re resort. Nelson Mandela was labeled as a terrorist, condemned internationally by uh, so many Western leaders. It was illegal in Britain to protest against apartheid. Just let, let, let that sink in. It was illegal for people to protest against apartheid in Britain. And now, fast forward a few years after apartheid, uh, everyone, you know, is in praise of Nelson Mandela, the ANC, uh, in, in, the, in the whole story. They have, from terrorists, become the good guys uh, of history now. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of frustrating because these debates, again, have no winner or no losers. Um, I, I feel all these uh, three people have defended themselves brilliantly. These debates appear on TV not for the sake of uh, the truth or information or anything. It is for the sake of entertainment, I said once again. The goal of such shows is to bring viewers in. It's to make money again. And to make money again, you need to be controversial. You need to bring entertainment uh, and these kind of things. So sometimes entertainment can bring awareness and Bring, you know, open slightly the door for people to search more about a certain situation. Because for some people, debates have still have a symbolic power, again, all about symbols. And it's all about appearances. Do you, how do you appear on a debate? Do you appear as a loser or a winner? Even if, you know, if there's no competition in, in a debate, it won't change ultimately the fate of the world and humanity because these are not constructive conversations. Uh, these are not conversations about solutions. These are, you know, the question is, how do you feel? Do you condemn, yes or no? As if answering these questions would solve the problems, and these debates might be uh, might be useful to uh, see the uh, situation from different angles. Because you may have people in the workplace, people you meet on a, on a daily basis, who may have certain opinions, misinformed opinions, and may develop prejudices uh, because of these simplification simplifications and generalizations. And it feels good to know what to answer. Uh, to, to these people if they question, uh, if they're being, you know, black and white and bring some nuance in. And it is fun. I think it is, it is important in a uh, day and age where the media and political discourses again simplify and generalize these situations and make them black and white, uh, stripping them of any kind of nuance. It may not change the whole situation, but it may make some people click 
and figure out that, wait a second, there is something inconsistent in what I have been hearing, in what the media have been presenting, what the politicians have been saying. There's some inconsistency and let me do the research. Let me figure out a bit more on, on the situation. So thank you very much for watching and again, take care of yourselves and each other.